the last few years, collective research has debunked the popular myths that a high fiber diet lifestyle can cause unfinished housework, late dinners, and neglected family members. In fact, continuing studies show that a high fiber diet lifestyle may significantly improve the disposition of a crafter, creating a more contented home life. Furthermore, continued exposure can develop an ability to endure meetings, waiting rooms, school functions, and sporting events without experiencing the kind of boredom that makes one want to consume lead paint. Here are just a few ways one can properly increase daily fiber intake. Visit your local yarn store or shop online. Join online fiber communities. Tour sheep or alpaca farms. Attend fiber festivals. Or listen to the High Fiber Diet podcast. Please remember to spread your fiber intake throughout the day rather than trying to get it all in one shot. Stretching and resting is important and your body will thank you. I guess that's as good as it's going to get because it's a little bit wonky, but hell, I'm a little bit wonky. Hi, I'm Kagi, and welcome to the High Fiber Diet. Oh, we're here in my dining room, and I have a whole passel of stuff to talk about. Um, I am not going to apologize that I've been gone for a couple of months. Uh, it's been a crazy time here. I've been in physical therapy because of my arm. And I wasn't able to knit, spin, crochet anything for a little bit. And then I was able to do some, so it was really slow going. And I just felt, you know, I needed a time to take a break, reassess, take care of me, take care of the house, take care of Sarge, um, and then come back when I was ready. And there were days I wondered if I'd ever be ready. And then there's days like this that I'm here. So I'm going to try and straighten the screen just a little bit. And I'm going to grab one more thing that I forgot about. And I'll be right back with you. Well, I think that's as good as it's going to get. So it is what it is. Sarge called while I was up getting things, so I stopped and talked with him for a few. He is headed up to friends, and I have a rare night off, so yeah, he'll be back tomorrow sometime. Kind of nice. Um, so I thought I'd spend it with you. Uh, let's get into this. Let's see. Well, I haven't been knitting much. I did finish a couple of projects, and... The first one I don't even have anymore. It was my Ariana cardigan, and that is by um, Christoffers, I think. Yeah. And really and truly, I didn't enjoy making it. I didn't enjoy the pattern. I know it's a free pattern. Um, the, the squares, normal granny squares, putting it on the diagonal, not that hard. Um, what was missing was how to join, how to do it to where, you know, you had the schematic of one through whatever and how to join it. So I did it my way and I mean, I don't know if it was the right way, the wrong way, whatever, it got done, but it was too big for me and it just didn't fit me right. The sleeves were too long, it was too long. It just, it wasn't even one that you could wear with leggings. So, or I could wear with leggings. So I took it to work and there was this lady that had seen me working on it and seen pictures and she's like, oh my God, it is so gorgeous. So the yarn that I did it out of, and I'll put a picture somewhere here of the finished garment on me. Um, I didn't get a picture on her. But the yarn that I used was Liberty Wool 
and I have a whole bunch of Liberty wool that I had picked up um, when I when a yarn store had gone out of business probably 10 years ago if not longer um, and so I had picked up the yarn and it was more of this orangey than the one I just showed you this is a different it was in case I didn't have enough I had a skein of that and I have a whole sweaters worth of this one also and I used a size five millimeter hook for doing everything and then I also used the Pacific Sport that I was originally doing that tank top out of and I was worried I wouldn't have enough of this and I have half a skein left over and I just did the outside of every um, square and I joined and I did all of the ribbing with this and then I picked up buttons to do also and I sewed them on with that but the colors um, here's one of them that's going but the colors that that actually came out were very fall very apple picking very gorgeous and I loved it I love the colors it just didn't fit me but when I gave it to my co-worker and she put it on and it fit her beautifully she was working at another dealership when I gave it to her she put it on she loved it and then the next day she wore it to work I was like wow so um, she loved it and says that it keeps her nice and warm so I'm very happy the pattern I had to 3d it in order to see where things crossed over where things went into the round it was just the way it was in my brain so um, it just wasn't the right pattern for me so will I make it again no did I make it yeah did it turn out well my coworker thinks so so that's all that matters um, and she loves it and I told her how to take care of it and everything will be good so there's that and this is a Richard scary bag um, not sure who made this I know it was one that I wanted I love my Richard scary so it's my Richard scary bag what else did I finish I don't know I think last time I talked about these but I'm not sure so I brought them back out because I haven't used them and normally if I've talked about them I put them into rotation and these are actually a little bit too big for me so they're actually going to be going for boo these are the 12 days of Christmas from last Christmas I started them on my trip to now that I'm thinking about it I think I did talk about it last episode that I had finished them it came with a full skein of the speckle it came with the 12 days of Christmas I did an afterthought heel um, and they turned out just a smidge too big and boo wears just that much bigger of a of a shoe than I am so I think she's getting these as part of her Christmas present and those are my two finished objects which I guess one finished object because this one I talked about before oh well um I have a lot of whips though like I said um, this tendon which um, they're doing uh, acupuncture um, it's called dry needling and trying to fix it I've been in physical therapy I just got okayed for more physical therapy so hopefully next week I'll be starting back up and I've been doing the yellow band where you're reaching and you're doing but um, I had a lump here I had to um, go in and look at it a lot of people were saying online when I showed it that it's a ganglion cyst it's not it is a cyst but it's not a ganglion um, the doctor says they're gonna have to go in and remove and that'll be in a future time but um, it came up during physical therapy and me doing some motions that I had to do and suddenly boom I have that it's painful um, doctor says it needs to be removed so I did that went in for um, Dexy scan and all sorts of other scans and lots of blood work and everything else to see why my body is falling apart again but um, I'm back on my bariatric routine and things like that so n not a lot of time sitting and knitting or crocheting but I have a lot of projects going so it's like what do I want to work on tonight or what's the new and I want to start it now and I have a couple of those 
So right now my car knitting and on the go, my car knitting, if I'm stuck, if I'm in, you know, Walgreens drive up or the bank drive up or whatever else that I have to go to are my Felici socks. They are just a um, slip one, knit one as you get to the next color. These have been going forever. Um, I think I started these two years ago, something like that. Um, they are being done in the colorway mosaic. And of course that's from Knit Picks. And I'm actually doing these two at a time magic loop, which is not my go-to. I am a DPN person. Um, these are 1.5s, US 1.5s, um, which is I think a, I don't know what it is in metric, sorry, not happening. Uh, does it say on here? No, Paul, it says it's a one through three inch, so, or a one through three needle. But yeah, I like Felici, so I'm going to do these. And I think if I get these finished in time for Christmas, because it seems like a stocking year, um, these will be for possibly my daughter-in-law for Christmas. So yeah, that's another pair of socks. Then my other on-the-go need um, for meetings or if I'm in a Zoom meeting or if I'm in between places, I am knitting on. Um, this is Malabrigo. And I forget the colorway. It's Deep Stash. But it is The Brickless by Martina Bame. And... I am, let's see, it's all tangled up. Let's untangle it. Pull it out. You start at this end and casting on here, and then you work this way and bind off. And it's kind of like the hitchhiker where you have um, different segments. But with this one, it is a segment of ribbing, a segment of garter, a segment of lace, and it continues. So it starts with lace, goes into garter, goes into ribbing. It's supposed to go straight into the lace, but I like the garter in between. So I am um, just continuing on. I have two of these skeins that I'm going to use. Normally it's done, I think, in a fingering weight. I'm not sure, but I'm doing it at DK weight. And I just, I love the colors that it is coming out with. And I'm very happy with how this is um, going. And it's going to be slow going, but it's a little bit of finger fiddling when I'm looking at things and having to have conversations and in meetings. And it's kind of brainless, so that works for me. This is in a bag by somebody. I know that's horrible, but yeah, I have bags from all over. If I know it, I will say it. If I don't, I can't. Um, when I was in the crochet mood, uh, my arm was killing me and I'm like, I gotta do something. Let's just go. So we went, we were at the store and I picked up some, do you say Bernay or do you say Burnett? So I say Bernay, so I don't know. Tell me what's right. This is from not Yarnspirations. It's Bernay Forever Fleece. It is 100% polyester and super, super squishy. And this will be a blanket. And I have several skeins here. I think I'm on the second skein. Yep, and I have four total. And so I am doing this up with a size N or 15 or 10 millimeter, which is funny because I tease Sarge that I have a 10 millimeter. He has, you know, I have a nine millimeter. I carry mine. I don't have to conceal. Yeah, that kind of thing. But this is just a simple, gonna be a couch blanket. Um, I'll be weaving this all in. There's no right side, there's no wrong side. It's single crochet and double crochet 
and just what it is. And I'll get all four done and then I'll do some sort of a border, probably, probably just a simple crab stitch, uh, reverse single crochet. But this is being held in my bag from Cozy Sky Company. And take that out, show you their logo. So Cozy Sky Company out of Texas. They're part of the Texas, Pearled in Texas, I think it is. Yeah, um, podcast. And Elizabeth is the one that makes these, but it's in Gandhi and Cupid. She painted those and I love it. And I get a lot of compliments on it. In fact, uh, one of the ladies at work saw this. Um, I was using it as a work bag. And she said that she might be contacting Elizabeth to get her, is it a Bichon? I think it's like, looks like a poodle to me, but I think it's a Bichon. And she loves her little puppy and um, might be getting a bag like this. So that's cool. It has a nice pocket. It has a D-ring um, for holding stitch markers and things like that. And I have a few other things from her, some needle tip things that I'll show later. And um, she always sends through wonderful things. I have, um, this one has the hearts with feeties, um needle tips and um, a USA bubble tea cup stitch marker. And that's really cute. But it's big enough that it hold, it held all four skeins and now it's holding the Afghan and two skeins at this point, and I just love it. So that is going. And what else do I have going? Uh, oh, um, in this bag, and this is a gnome bag from a Advent last year, year before last, year before last, I think. And this is by Abby's Creative. And I have the Big Sister cardigan going on. And this one I started a long time ago. This bag has not only Nomi's on the outside and cork reindeer, but it has hearts on the inside and I love it. It's nice and roomy and it holds a sweater's worth. And this is Puzzle Yarn from Premier. And it is a cotton acrylic blend. And I am again knitting on this. Whoops, the bag just hit the floor. But <laughs> when Elizabeth sent me the last package, she sent me the most perfect progress keeper ever. Let's see if I can get it to turn around. Let's see if you can see that. It's my favorite word. So I had to, yep. But this is a top down um, and Big Sister is by, I wrote down notes, um, Hinterstein, Hinternstein, and it's in Yarn Puzzle, like I said, and it's got this interesting start with the sleeves and you come down and then all of your borders are knit on at the same time. And I am beyond the sleeves now, and I'm about to the point of the waist, and I've got another eh, eight inches before I do anything with pockets and things like that. Um, I don't know. Did I pull out? Let me see. I have some of these that I decided to print off pictures, and that would be easier. If not, I will put it up here. And that will be easier. And I don't think this is one of the ones that I printed off the picture. Nope. So I will put a picture in here somewhere and get that taken care of. So you can see what that is. And I love it. The only thing is, as you see in the picture, there's notches. I did not do the notches. I did a couple extra rows there. Um, I didn't do short rows like some people did. I just wanted it smooth. So I just did it smooth. And that's what I did. 
So yeah, that's my big sister. It is in fog. I think it's sea fog is the, the colorway. And I have four more of these skeins to do it up in. This is only my second skein. So this has gone, it's got a really big skein that it's working on. Um, put that back in the bag when I can reach the bag. Uh, what else do I have going? Um, my Minerva sweater, and that is in ooh, my basket. I have it kept in this. This sits by the chair. I figured maybe something that wasn't quite as heavy. And the Minerva, I will put a picture up here too. I just saw that I didn't have it. This is the back. It is done in pieces. So this is the back all the way up to the neckline. And I have just started the yarn. I have just started on the front and it's bottom up. So here are my needle tip holders. And these are from Cozy Sky Company also, and I'll put them in here. They are an acorn and a squirrel, and I love them. Of course, squirrels and things. Squirrels and things. So this is, uh-oh, I got a snag. I'll work that back through. But that's the beginning of one front. And so I believe this is the left front and it kind of folds over in the front and then we'll have the right front and then we'll do sleeves and it's supposed to be a little bolero jacket. I'm doing it longer than that because I don't like bolero. This I am doing out of uh, wool to die for merino bulky superwash, um, 106 yards per 100 gram skein. I had a um, pack of 10 from when I used to dye. And so I had some bear left over. And I'm not sure if I'll dye this afterwards. Um, maybe. Maybe I will take this and dunk it into a dye bath after I'm done and change its color, but we'll see. Because I'm kind of enjoying the cream right now. It's not something I normally wear, but in the winter time, I do like a cream cardigan. So that's what this is gonna be. And then what I started this morning, I had ripped out my Alpine Bloom. Um, it just wasn't, the color work on it wasn't going well. And I liked the colors. And the colors I had going originally, uh, which bag is that? This one. This one? Nope. I think it was in my... I'm the little sister bag, yep. Yeah. So originally I was doing this um, turquoise, dark turquoise color, and this um, terracotta color. And together, these are absolutely gorgeous. But I found another thing to do, and I don't have enough of this color. So this will go with something else. I have some gray in there left over from when I did my quill that I think this will look beautiful with. So I set aside that. And originally I had brought out some of my um, Shepherd's Wool Crazy. And I was going to do something color work with the three of them. And then I went, nope. I saw this pattern the other day on... can't remember her podcast. I'll try and put it in down here. Um, she's from out Arkansas or something. She went to Rhinebeck and I was watching her um, thing from Rhinebeck and she was wearing this shawl. And the shawl is called the Moon Sister Shawl. So I took the terracotta and I had some cadet blue. And the Cadet Blue has just a tad tint of purple to it, but it's a smoky, um, you know, Cadet Blue. That's, that's what I see in it. And the Terracotta, 
which is that. And when you put it together, it becomes that. And I have just started this. And I'll put a picture of what it's supposed to end up like. And I am really, really liking this. Um, it's an interesting, you start off in one color and then you add in the second color and you're marling it so together. And then in the middle, you're doing color work with the two colors that you're marling on the sides. And then eventually you have fringe at the bottom. And I'm just loving this. So I know that it's very toothy in the hand, but I also know from having my quill that it softens up immensely once it's washed. So this is another um, Cozy Sky Company. Yes, I have other bags. These are what I'm using right now. Um, this is the one I ordered while I was moving from South Dakota to Michigan. Um, and this is my knitting bees and my busy bees on the back. Love it. Um, and it just has, um, I put on my um, Sweet Mountain Fiber camping pin on it. And this one has the hook at the top that closes it. And so it holds everything together very nicely. And I love it. So that is my Moon Sister shawl out of... Um, a GN Tweed yarns. And then when I tried spinning and I spun for one day and I got together with my daughter-in-law and I spun with her. And um, she is spinning on my old uh, fricky wheel. Mm. And we sat down and we got her back into spinning and she's all excited about getting back into that. And I spun for a little bit for one day. It was supposed to be spin every day in October and because of my elbow, I wasn't able to. Um, so I knit when I could, I crafted when I could and <laughs> I purchased when I couldn't. So, you know, it's how it is. So um, I also did some cooking. So before I get into my acquisitions, um, I'm gonna talk about some of the foods that I've been eating because um, October was always Crocktober for me and that's when the Crock-Pot comes out. Well, I got rid of my Crock-Pot five years ago and I bought a new one. And this one is so much better. And yeah, I still have my Instapots and I use those, I love that. But um, this crock pot, I'm just really enjoying cooking with. So I made some soups and some other things. So um, crock pot potato soup with frozen hash browns. I will link the um, recipe in my show notes. I don't do a lot of show notes, but I'm going to try to, okay? Um, this one was very simple. Uh, it's hash browns, a can of cream of, mush cream of chicken soup, uh, chicken broth, bacon, cheese, heavy cream, and salt and pepper. And it was simple. Um, I used a uh, hand blender to whip it up and get it creamy. A little bit of chunks, but um, and then we topped it with super crispy bacon on top. And it was phenomenal. So that one's one we're going to go back to. Tonight for dinner, because I made enough of this for freezer meals, um, Sarge is not a butternut squash person. I love butternut squash soup. And so I made a big crock pot full of this and then individualized it in containers for my freezer. And I am having butternut squash soup with cream cheese. It's uh, butter, onion, squash, water, bouillon, which I use stock instead. Um, instead of the water, I just use stock. And uh, salt, pepper, cayenne pepper, and cream cheese. And then you blend it all up after it's been cooked. And I roasted the butternut squash normally in this. You just put it in um, raw and it cooks up. So it only took half the time. 
and it has that roasted flavor. And I top mine just like Panera does. I top mine with uh, roasted pumpkin seeds on top and it's just phenomenal and so yummy. The third soup I did was slow cooker corn chowder and it is, I add green chilies to mine because I like green chilies in mine. I like it a little bit spiced up and it's got all the recipe and all the things and so good. But the one that shocked me that Sarge asked me to put in my new repertoire was I was looking for something that was like, what do I have in the cupboard? What can I make? And I did this in the Instapot instead of in the Crock-Pot. But I made um, Crock-Pot barbecue chicken with quinoa. And I, like I said, I did it quickly in the Crock-Pot or in the Instapot one night. And this was so good, so good. And he's, we've had it twice now, and I'm sure it's going to be one of the um, additions to, our, you know, when you find something good, you find something good. So that's what we did. And this comes from wholeyum.com. So <laughs> I'll put that in the, um, in the show notes as well. But these are just, you know, I have my normal go-tos. I make uh, my cheesy chicken nuggets. I make uh, his meatloafs that he loves that are in cupcake tins. And, uh, you know, normal things that we cook. I'm, I'm really gotten into um, Mandy in the Making and Six Sisters and, and videos like that that they give me ideas for new foods, but you know, you have the tries and trues that you've had for 20 years that you make. And, um, I make tamale pie and I make enchiladas and I make pasta and I don't call it spaghetti cause I don't use spaghetti noodles. Um, and you know, different foods like that, the casseroles that we make, we really don't care for goulash. I know a lot of people love it. We don't, but I make, you know, my pasta is kind of like that. So, but I don't call it goulash because it's more Italian flavors. Um, but if you have any recipes that you think I might try, shout them out. I'd love to hear from it. Um, now let's go into what I've been, you know, working on. My phone just popped up that the Army Air Force game is on. It starts in about three minutes, and I don't know who's going to win. Sarge normally watches that. I'm not watching it. There you go. Okay. Um, let's go into books first, because that's been my inspiration for a lot of things. And then I have quite a few online. So while I was down and out, I went to the library and I picked up by Beth Smith, um, one of the people that got me into spinning was Beth at her old um, spinning loft. And she wrote this book, How to Spin, um, From Choosing Your Spinning Wheel to Making Yarn. And it's one I hadn't read. So I picked it up at the library and I read through it. And then I went, I need to get this book because it's going to be a reference for when I teach others how to spin. And especially with teaching my daughter-in-law, there's points in here that just things, um, woolen versus worsted and how to do it. And I mean, it isn't as good as like Respect the Spindle or um, Worsted to Woolen that uh, J.C. Boggs does or... Um, you know, things like that. But this is a really good reference book for um, for spinning and how to pick your right spinning wheel and what to look for. What kind of yarn do you want to make? And if you already have a spinning wheel, is that the only one you need, you know? And how can you change it? Instead of changing your body, change the tool. So this one's really good. Then I was watching Wise Owl Knit which is another podcast. She's also a designer. And I just got a check in the mail out for this one. So this is a book about Paula Emmons Fussell, who was um, knitting pipeline. And she did the knitting pipeline 
podcast and held the Knitting Pipeline retreat, which unfortunately I meant to go two years in a row and both times got very ill and could not attend. But I'd met her a couple times at Stitches and she was an absolutely lovely lady. And this is a history um, of Paula. And this book was written by Sue Mullins Whitkins. And she is, let me get her Instagram name correct. Um, oh, I'll see if I can find it in here and put it up here, but um, I don't see it on here. It did with shipping and everything, cost me 50. It's for nonprofit. I believe it goes back to um, the family. She was the one that always ended her podcast with Hasty Back, Hold Your Knitting Close. Um, and she knit with Elizabeth Zimmerman. And she would tell stories of Elizabeth Zimmerman and the knitting um, camp that she went to. And that was fabulous. And she got on with her husband and Bob talked on her podcast and it was just a lovely time and I wanted this book um, not only to help out what is being helped out but um, also because she was a lovely lady so I will hopefully put the Instagram name that I went to on this and um, if you want one you can get one then I picked up the Lina, I think that's how you say it, magazine, um, did some books. And I've, I don't know, if you're, I guess it's called the OG, if you're one of the originals, you know that I've always wanted to learn to embroider, and I still haven't learned. It's just something I haven't sat down and done. I have all the books, but I had to get another book. And so this is Embroidery on Knits. And I so want to be able to do that. And I know I can, I just need to sit down and be able to. Pause it for a second, my son called. Uh, I get my granddaughter tonight. But um, back to the embroidery, the little bits of being able to paint on your nets without doing color work, just something that will add to it. Or say you get a snag like I just did in that sweater, which I'll be able to fix, but Say you get a snag and you need to fix it, well, external darning and turning it into beauty one of these days. And I mean, this is just, there's this dragonfly. That's just gorgeous. And how to do it and what kind of thread to use. And I have a... Um, Oh, before I get into that, it comes with all of the graphs in the back, so it's in a pocket. But I have, my mother had a cruel picture up in our dining room when I was growing up. And this cruel had a statement from Thomas Jefferson, which said something about um, tyranny. And I finally found it. I think one of my sisters or my nieces um, picked up grandma's actual one. And I found it and I wanna do cruel work. Well, before I can do cruel work, I have to learn how to use the needle and the threads and the, all the things. And so I wanna do that. So I'm getting into this. And I haven't officially used it, but I've looked through it. And as a looky book, it's amazing. And yeah. So, Next is something I've been interested in is why is the Bible the Bible? And so I picked up right here, I have MacArthur's Study Bible and it's the American Standard Bible and it goes really in depth in each one of the um, chapters that are there, chapter and verse and, you know, explaining and everything. And I'm not 
super church going or religious, but I want the history and I want the education and I do believe in God. And so, you know, the more knowledge you have, the better you are. So I figured we, Chad and I were talking and we said that we were going to look up some history that isn't there, that we should, you know, get the other side of things. Why were books removed from the Bible? And what are the books and can we read them? So I picked up, um, this is the missing books of the Bible, removed in the 19th century, the Apocrypha, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Enoch, Jubilees, Philip, and Mary. And we've been going through these and having discussions during dinner. So we'll both read it in the morning, um, once a week, and we'll, we'll read certain chapters we have them marked. And then we come back together after thinking about it and doing our own interpretations and um, having some discussions. And this has been good dinner talks with us. And it is big print, but it is very, there, there's parts of it like Mary, Mary Magdalene. Um, parts of it has been lost. I don't have the complete. And so, you know, you kind of have to go off of what's here. And that one kind of made me sad because I wanted to read all of it. And, you know, when things are lost, things are lost. So I, I know this isn't the only printing. There may be others with more inclusive. I don't know, but that's one of the books I picked up. Um, another book I picked up is Nitivation and this was my friend Lori um, we were looking at doodles and that's one of the patterns that I'm going to get into in a little bit and she said well why don't we pick up this and do our own doodles and this is really cool and it is just small um, patterns and how to do those small patterns and so it's all color work like that one definitely doing the Nomi's gotta do the Nomi's um, but they didn't have exactly what I wanted. So on that, I went ahead and I picked up a couple of the doodle patterns, which I will talk about, um, in a minute. The last book I got recently is Tasting History by Max Miller. I remember when Max came out during the pandemic, I remember watching him from the very first episode. It was early on in the pandemic. He had been laid off from Disney because they were closed down and then eventually decided not to go back to Disney. He was making enough doing his videos and he's taken off from there. Him and Sorted Foods just, you know, Sorted Foods been out there for a lot longer. Congratulations to the guys for doing 1 billion downloads, I think it is. But, um, this book goes through a lot of what he talked about on This Is Max and a lot about what he talked about on his uh, YouTube, but it's got other interesting things. And it's, you know, me and history, I love history and I love food. And so there's certain things in here that I'm like, hmm, got to try that, like Texas pecan pie and other ones um, that I'm like, yeah, not so much. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of these sound good. Other things are like that can stay in history and I'm good with it. But, um, Turt de Brie and, uh, this is an egg yolk brie filling tort. It could be interesting. There are some things that he does on his, uh, on his show and I'm like, no, I'm good. I, I don't need to do that. <laughs> Other things, I'm like, hmm, that one sounds good. But he's adventuresome, and so I picked up the book. Uh, you know, to help him mostly, because, you know, I've been watching him since the beginning, and I know how it is trying to get a podcast out there. I am definitely not as professional as he is, and this is just for fun. So, um... Other patterns I have picked up. Whoa, that just hit the floor, so we'll put that down there. Oops. Um, 
I have ideas. This one is called the Windless Shawl or Windlass. It's by Amy Palmer. I have two full skeins of Kiviet that I think I want to make up into this. I had started something else and it just didn't turn out. And this is a drop stitch um, triangular shawl. And two full skeins of Kiviet isn't that much Kiviet. And it is a lace weight, but I figured this would make up into a beautiful neck cozy shawl that is simple to make, not a lot of brain power, but will be beautiful in the end. And so it is a Barocco pattern. I believe it's free. It's done out of Remix in their pattern, but I'm going to be doing it out of Kiviet. Then just yesterday, uh, Rebecca Klo came out with Stick Season. And I've been watching her knit on this. She has her podcast, Crea Bea. And um, Sarge watched it and he kind of took a look and he said, I like that sweater. And I said, for you? And he said, mm -hmm. that's not normal. Sarge doesn't ask me to knit for him much. So I went digging and this is stick season. It has a bit of um, texture up here. It's non-textured here. It has some things around the armpit and down the side that give it stability. This is the only picture I printed, so you'll have to go out and look at the stick season pattern. But I went into my stash and I have 220 Superwash by Cascade that has never been opened. So there's 10 skeins here. And that's enough to do his size. And this is, it kind of looks gray, but it's not. It is a green, it's green with browns and peaches in it. But from a distance, it bleeds gray. And Sarge is very much, you know, army camo. He's like, yeah, that color. And so I'm like, okay. So this is um, a light worsted. So what you would now call a DK. But I think I can get away with it for this pattern. And I think I have enough. Um, the color number is 860. And I have, like I said, a full sweater's worth out of it. I can still get more if I need to, but I think that will be enough to fit Sarge. And this looks like it has a turned hem ribbing. Um, the sleeves aren't, but it looks like the neckline is. Um, and if not, that's definitely a um, rolled bind off, if not. Um, I just, I think Sarge is going to enjoy that. And since he asked for it, we're going to go for it. Then I had seen Whistle and Wool. Lion Brand came out with something. And um, I saw this and I wanted it. This is the Cider Shacket. So it's like a blanket and jacket and sweater and everything. It's um, full of relaxing garter stitch. This project will have the feel of your favorite oversized jacket with the lightness of a knit. With a thick collar, detail, and a hidden pocket, these designs and details combine to form the oh-so-comfy Cider Shacket. And because at the time I absolutely loved the color, I ordered enough of the respun, exactly what it called for. I got the kit, and so I got the exact color. And so I will be making this up, I believe, for me. I believe. While I was at it, because you can't just order one kit, you know, I decided to go with Lorraine. And this is copyright by Lo Lo Shapra, I believe. 
and it is the v-neck pullover pattern done in a shaker knit so that's not um oh what's that other one anyways it's not this is shaker knit which is like a fisherman's knit and again it was in the colors that I absolutely adore and this is Woolies and I love a, a Woolies because you can just throw it in the washer and dryer and so I picked up this color which is does it have a color name on it yes Canyon Sunset and so it is definitely a blush with a beige mix and I think that's going to come out perfect for that and so I ordered enough for that so that's Three sweaters worth I have sitting down there. And then just yesterday, I saw the new, well, it wasn't the new, I was watching, is it the Knitting Posse? And they had picked up the Autumn Pom Pom at Rhinebeck. And they only have it in digital right now. But the moment I saw this sweater, I'm like, I have to knit that. And that is this sweater, which is the Chinook Winds. It's a DK weight out of a cotton yak called Katia Concept. And I want that. I don't know that I want it in natural. I may do a bit more of a gray. And I think I would change it to not have bobbles because I'm not a bobble person, but I do like the little fringes. Um, but that just depends. I just really like it. So I picked up the digital magazine. I have it on my iPad. And then I found four or five other patterns within there that I want to knit up. But I think the next thing that I'm going to start out of any of this, though I've just started that shawl and I've just started other things, but... My hands at work are freezing. I have a good 12 foot plate glass window at the front of my office. And it's really hot in the summertime and it's really cold in the wintertime. And it snowed the other day and I saw how cold my office is gonna get. No. So I need a pair of Susie Roger knitting mitts. Now I have made these before when they used to be just called Susie's reading mitts. And they are fingerless mitts with a Pico edging and eyelets, and they're simple. It's a free pattern and really easy to make. Um, designer was Susie Rogers, and these re reading mitts are just, I love them. Well, I believe it's, yep, it's done in DK yarn, and I have just received my package from Sweet Mountain Yarns. And her Sweet Mountain Yarns, it, this month for the adventure, um, she has an adventure sock yarn. And this month it is sweater weather. And the story that she sends with it, there's always a story and I love her stories. Um, but she decided this is sweater weather. And definitely falls and my colors and this will go perfect with my camel coat if I do the offsets in this, so I do a bit of the top and a bit of the bottom and maybe the thumb in this and then the rest in this. And along with that, um, of course, is the organza bag that she always sends, which I love because it keeps everything together. There was a tea that I have already had and loved, but she also sent highlighter tape, which I love for a paper pattern. She sent a sweater comb, which you can never have enough. I was looking for my gleaner the other day and I had to dig through boxes to find my gleaner. So this will be come in handy. And um, there's always a code on the back of the card for any purchases from her shop at Sweet Mountain Yarns. And um, she is also the proprietress of Wyoming Yarns in Cody, Wyoming. And yeah, if you're going to Yellowstone, stop by and see her. Um, the other thing that I've been purchasing is all over my house, and this is the only part of it that I can talk about because it's the only one I can grab right now, but I've gotten rid of all liquid or powder um, laundry soap. Um, I use the laundry sheets now, and I love it. 
Um, I went through Grove Company and I am really enjoying their products. Um, they're really good for the environment. Well, this is something that I have taken to carrying in my purse and this one smells like spice pumpkin. But these are little soaps and you need about half a soap. There's a perforated line in there and you just tear it. And if you're in a laboratory and using the facilities, this will help you wash your hands and you don't have any residue after. And there's 40 washes in here. And I love being able to carry this. You know, you carry Kleenex in your purse anyways. You carry, you know, things that you need. Well, I've noticed that a lot of places where you go in and you use the facilities, there aren't hand wash right now. Um, the soap dispensers are gone. And I'm like, that's just gross. So the one thing we learned in COVID was how many people didn't wash their hands. I'm into washing my hands. And this is inexpensive and easy to carry around in my purse. And it just dissolves in water and you're done. So I'm loving this. Um, I like their cleansers. Uh, I use their dish soap um, for the dishwasher and for the sink. Um, I also have just ordered their face cream and their shampoo and body wash. Um, that'll come in my next shipment. And if you need a code, I will go ahead and put that down below also. But I am very much advocating for them right now. It's good for the environment. Um, their trash bags are recyclable. Um, I got their welcome kit when I got it and it came with a whole bunch of different things. Um, even their um, toilet cleaner, the, the squirt stuff that you put in. Um, it wouldn't hurt the cats if they were to get into it. Not that they do, but, um, that kind of thing. So it's, it's better for things. So I've been going with Grove Company and, and doing that. Um, so this is future Coggy. Sorry. Um, while I was editing, I figured out that I had forgotten to talk about something and I need to talk about it. Um, a friend of mine on Instagram is making keychains right now. And I didn't forget because I didn't want to talk about it. I forgot because I'm a ditz and that's how it goes. So her name on Instagram, and I'll put this down here, is ZozoB0304. And her email is Zozo, that's Z-O-Z-O, -Z -O, the beater. B E E D E R might be B E A D E R at yahoo.com. I will check with her and make sure. But she makes these beaded bracelets that are keychains. So you can slide them on so you don't lose your keys. And then it's got the keychain and a tassel, or you can just hold on to them. So she made me one that has sparkles. and a turquoise tassel. She made me one that doesn't have sparkles and it's kind of shifted offset with the different colors and it again has the turquoise tassel and she also made a straight one and it has a multicolored tassel at the bottom. And these are leather tassels and these are, this one of course won't go over your wrist because it's straight, but it, you know, find it in the bottom of your purse or whatever, you can grab onto it. It's now your keychain. They're super lightweight, so they're not too heavy. I have a problem with heavy things on my keys that are going to yank out my ignition. And I don't like that because I still have a car that has an ignition. I know some people have those little fob things and they just push button and they're good. I'm not that fancy. But check out... ZozoB0304 on Instagram, and I'll get you her um, correct email in the bottom. But these are really cute, and they were inexpensive, and one of them will be a gift for a friend, and the other one is for me. And thank you. Back to past me. Other than that, things that are going on, we went to uh, the... Lewis Farms, we saw a ton of animals. We got to shoot apples through a machine gun. Um, we 
it, it was just a fabulous day. We had a corn maze that we went through and the grandkids would pick the corn and then they were tearing the corn apart and they were shoving it in bags and shoving it in pockets. And grandpa, when he got into the car, he's like, what the heck is in my, and he had corn everywhere. And I had to vacuum out my car from it. And it was just a fun day. Boo and her husband and her mother-in-law were there and, uh, Bear and his family were there, and it was just a whole bunch of fun. And then... Love it. buying pumpkins and it was going to be Halloween and it was going to be all that fun and it snowed on Halloween. It snowed bad on Halloween. It was so bad that there were nine inches up in Muskegon, which is up where uh, Bear's family lives and they lost power. And I think my in-laws were without power for two or three days before it came back on and they canceled Halloween. So tonight is Halloween in that area. Some went uh, trick-or-treating the next day, most are going tonight. I'm going to go up and get my granddaughter and we're gonna have a grandma-granddaughter day, um, and uh, or night, I should say. 
Um, so it, it's been an adventure. I am working. I am, you know, at work most of the time. So are just taking care of the house. Um, things are just coming together. We're getting ready. We're doing a lot of things. We have the um, 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party is coming up in December and instead of doing a big Christmas party we're going to be celebrating that and having family here that way there's no gifts no nothing just games and fun and talking and a celebration of um, you know the revolution the celebration of, of becoming who we are now and that's what it's going to be. I'm going to make soups and we'll have tea and we'll have whiskey and we'll have other things. Um, I have uh, gone on the wagon. I don't drink anymore, but they will be. Uh, I have decided that it's not good for me. I've gone back to the bariatric and um, I'm on my way down and that's a good thing. I'm back to getting who I am. Um, they're dealing with my back issues. They're dealing with my shoulder and my my arm. There are other things that are going on. Um, during this time, I landed in with AFib again, and uh, they had to shock me back to normal. And it's just been a crazy couple of months, and that's mostly why I, I was doing the thing of living instead of the thing of trying to fight to get another podcast out. And I never want this to be a fight. This is something I enjoy doing and I do on my own and I will get it done as I get it done. So you'll stick around or you won't. Hopefully I have some new people. So hi, thank you for coming back those that did. Um, one more bag. If you have not seen Smart Ass and Sass, you know I'm a bag host. So um, they came out. I have a calendar that um, is the F-bomb all over it. But it's Smart Ass and Sass. They had a... Um, HR violation box come out and of course who am I? I'm HR so I have to have the HR violation box. Well one of the things was this um, this bag and yes it says fuckery abounds smart ass and sass um, social discomfort mass chaos and bad behavior and no, I do not take this one to work, but it is my new grocery gathering bag. I have this one. I have, um, what's my other one? Oh, I have my range day. I have my, um, I have an active bitch face, not a, not a resting bitch face bag. And those are the ones that I take to the grocery store. Mostly it keeps people away from me, so I'm good with that. Um... I hope all of you are going into the fall season. We have to turn back the clocks tonight. I hope all of you are going into the fall season with uh, good humor and good health. And until next time, check your checkbook before starting the high fiber diet. Bye-bye.